Welcome back to our last talk on this day five of Interpark. It is a very special and for the industry also very important topic that we are going to cover now. The headline of this talk is the EU Commission's proposal for a regulation on packaging and packaging waste. And with me is an expert on that field. With me is Dr. Wolfgang Trunk, policy officer at the EU Commission and in Brussels, and also team leader in the DG Environments Unit from Waste to Resources. Thank you so much for being with us today. Yes, uh, thank you uh, for the kind uh, introductory remarks. And I really must say I'm, I'm very happy to be here in Germany, which is my home country. And you can imagine that uh, since our publication of the Commission proposal for the new packaging law, in November 2022, 20, I was kind of traveling around, touring around through all uh, the European Union, and uh, uh, it's a special pleasure to come uh, come come to Germany, uh, which is not only the biggest uh, uh, member state in terms of citizens, but also important packaging uh, industry is is located here. So it's uh, I, I, I'm really reassured that I took the decision to come to Brus uh, to uh, Düsseldorf today. <laughs> You have already told me that you had a very busy schedule today. Have you been to Interpark before, or is this your first no, time? No, it's the first time, and uh, and I must say, I initially I got a, a small invite, and then I said, well, I cannot, just for this small event, I cannot make it, uh, and then I kind of informed several people uh, that I'll be there, and whoops, my <laughs> my, my agenda was uh, was f uh, completely full, and so. Uh, uh, but uh, maybe this is the last uh, last event of the day, or at least the official one. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it is a very um, important topic, I already said. The um, new regulation that is coming, also maybe one that makes the... Um, well, that drives a lot of emotions, I guess, because a lot is going to change. Can you talk us through the process of developing such a, pro uh, such a uh, regulation? Yes, uh, you mentioned it already. It is not only uh, uh, interesting, it is concerning everybody, everybody, uh, every consumer, every, every citizen is, uh, is, uh, is, is concerned, but also all the industry is, on, in, is concerned. You have really uh, the whole industry, the whole economy is confronted with packaging, and so of course it is uh, in the in the in the high high in the agenda of everybody, every stakeholder, every company. It's really uh, massive. And uh, well, uh, when we come out, when the commission come out, commission who has the the monop monopoly for kind of legislative proposals, uh, in f at first we do a kind of an impact assessment, or a real impact assessment. But the starting point is always, what problem do we want to solve with this? In former times, uh, there was a myth that in Brussels, the people, they just create some legislation uh, to, to whatever, for whatever reasons. But the starting point is always, why do you need this new legislation? And in this case, it was quite obvious that the current directive did not uh, achieve its objective of reducing packaging waste and of making the packaging more sustainable. And that was the starting point for us to reflect where can we where can we act and what can we do in order to improve the situation in packaging and the second big thing was and this is why i i would say was was the our 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 supporter to make it to make it through that the commission can propose something in war times in times where you have a very high inflation rate and the everybody has to 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 see where the, where his budget or expenditure goes so in this time, to come up with a proposal, with an ambitious proposal, and that was because we can, could really prove there are huge economic benefits of the proposal. So both things. First of all, we have to, to a, a ta a tackle the, the problem of everlasting increasing waste generation, 
with a very bad impact on the environment, poor sustainability of packaging, and on the other side, the packaging sector is confronted with huge administrative burden to cope with all these scattered legislation all over the 27 member states. How important is it that this new regulation is a regulation and not a directive? Yes, so you, you could say in, in, in principle the difference between the current scheme which is a directive where the member states have a huge uh, leeway or flexibility to uh, create their national systems uh, in this framework which the directive gives them and this led to a very very diverging situation throughout the EU and we found first of all that there is a huge discrepancy between the member states in terms of delivering on the objectives uh, but also that the, the industry is confronted with, uh, with, these, uh, with these national schemes, which costs a lot of money, the uh, uh, administrative burden I mentioned already. And so it is very important. And the third point is why it is so important to have this regulation with harmonized rules is that we have this shift in, 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 in architecture, in, in, in philosophy, that we overcome this thing from targets on member state level, on a, on a government level, we go down to the product base. So we came, come now with requirements at product level imposed on the economic operator. And this is a game-changing element of the proposal that we say, well, the, the government in Athens cannot cannot cope with, uh, with unsustainable packaging in Greece. They don't have the leverage to act on and to, to really medi uh, uh, mitigate the problems. And therefore, we, 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 we impose it on the economic operators in Greece, who place packaging on the market or who run a, 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 a retailer or, or so on. This is a big game-changing element of the, of the new proposal. Can you tell us a bit more about the, well, things that are really included in the, or will be included in the regulation that are going to change for companies. Is there something that you are particularly happy about that made it into the regulation? Well, uh, let me start uh, the, the, the usual, okay, I, I, will, I will not forget uh, the most important ones, so I will start with, in, with, the, with, the, with the articles. Uh, so uh, I think a very important point is, uh, is our recycled content uh, uh, requirements for plastic packaging. We know that plastic is our kind of Achilles heel um, because, first of all, we have a low recycling rate of these valuable uh, often with high uh, fossil fuel Im uh, uh, um, input uh, uh, produced plastic packaging, but then we have a small collection rate, a poor re recycling rate, and especially within this recycling, a very low quality, a downcycling. And therefore, with our new proposal to come up with these recycled content minimum requirements on each packaging that plastic packaging that is placed on the market we really make the difference and we see already the pull that this new announced requirements have on the whole recycling recycling value chain that we created by this so you, you, we really pull all these waste this plastic waste into a high quality recycling and this is one of the big of the big, uh, and the other two, uh, let's say, where I'm really happy is, is this uh, harmonization for the labeling requirements. We have, we have uh, the industries complaining, and with a good right, good point, with all these national uh, um, labeling rules. And so, with a new uh, uh, proposal, we come up with a harmonized scheme, probably based on this pictogram, so we don't, you don't even need a language. Uh, but the important point is that you have the pictogram not only on the packaging, uh, but also on the waste receptacle. That means on the waste bin or on the waste uh, bag. And so the consumer directly knows, and even I as a consumer, and I'm an expert in terms of packaging at least, sometimes I'm confused, do I put it in, in, in Germany in the blue bag or on the white or, or whatever. So this is a big pro, uh, process in order to, come of this con uh, to overcome this consumer confusion in which uh, dispose, uh, where to dispose properly a certain packaging. And this, but this has 
incredible benefits for the downstream value chain because then you have the, uh, the, the recycling streams are much more efficient if you have this good already purity and good sorting already from the beginning and this is also a, a huge proposal or let's say last point and then I could, I could uh, I, you feel I'm, I'm a little bit enthusiastic about this uh, and the last point is also in, in terms of uh, biodegradable compostable packaging. There's a lot of greenwashing around. People think if it's a bio biodegradable plastic bag, uh, I need it, I use it because it's bio but in, f in fact we, we really overcome this gray zone uh, hybrid uh, solution, we come up with clear rules, what goes into the bio waste stream, what goes into material recycling, and this to the benefit of the environment, circularity, and the consumer should, uh, should be clear with also again with these pictograms, okay, this goes into the organic waste stream, bio waste stream, and this goes into the blue bag, or in Germany, the yellow bag for uh, material recycling. Mm -hmm. Um, in order to get good quality recycles and also the amount that you need, you already mentioned that uh, the right sorting in consumer households is very important and the um, icons and labels that are clear to consumers. Are there other aspects of the um, regulation where you take companies uh, or you, where you make them accountable for informing the consumer on packaging, on materials and on um, sorting their waste correctly? Well, there is one thing that I have not yet uh, addressed, and this is uh, the recyclability. Uh, our political uh, leaders, they decided in 2022 to announce that by 2030, all packaging must be recyclable. And so we come up now with, uh, we are aware that there are a lot of packaging around which is very difficult to recycle, multi-layer materials, multi-material packaging and so on. And these, uh, these packaging will be in future classified in different uh, categories of packaging and the lowest category will, category E or grade E will be completely banned from the market. And so we have we have this, uh, this kind of uh, ranking for every packaging. It will be ranked according to, to his recyclability. The, 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 the poorest recyclability will be completely banned from the market. It has to disappear. It cannot be placed on the market and only recyclable. And within this recyclable, you also have mm, composite, uh, let's say, a tetra, tetra pack, uh, or a, a, a composite uh, a beverage container. <laughs> uh, he, he, can, he can be further improved in order to increase recyclability of this specific product. And like this, you really have then um, um, for, the, for the consumer also that he knows where to place it and for the waste in the industry to how to, to cope with. And these grades, these different grades, currently we count A, B, C, D, but we can also simplify it and only make two or one. Uh, uh, two or, or three, but the important thing is that the EPR fees, for those who know, this is the money that, uh, that, uh, that the producer, the manufacturer has to pay for the collection of the waste and then later on for the end of life treatment, that this is linked to the recyclability. So if, if I place on the market a monomaterial which is easily to uh, recycle, then you can have a lower fee, so the producer has to, to pay less uh, for, the, for, the, for, for, the, um, for the EPR fee. And like this, we, we kind of encourage uh, the whole industry to, uh, to increase, uh, not only to, to have recyclable, uh, only recyclable, but also to have a higher recyclability in, uh, for their products, for their packaging. Would you say that the focus of the new regulation is very much on um, this like end of life of packaging, the waste management and um, recyclability maybe? Or is it very balanced and also looking at the beginning of a packaging, of the design and everything? Yeah. Absolutely. So we have the whole chain in our, on the focus. So, so the packaging, the regulation, it starts from the production, from the design phase of a concrete uh, packaging, so that it is ver uh, at the best uh, re uh, recyclable uh, design already. But then 
we have the whole uh, life cycle, the whole value chain under the screen. Let me uh, come to a later step in this value chain is uh, DRS systems. We, we, we require Germany well known, but we require, uh, not, you know, we require that the valuable PET bottles and the aluminum cans, we can, which can be very good uh, recycled uh, for uh, the PET bottles for mecha in mechanical recycling and also the aluminum cans can be very good. So that these valuable uh, um, uh, packaging uh, items do not land in the residual municipal waste, but they go into recycling via DRS. And, uh, and this is a, a very, very important uh, measure to have a high collection rate of these, of these valuable uh, goods uh, in order to bring it back into closed loop closed loop recycling until the uh, 23rd of April companies from the industry have been able to give you kind of feedback and insight on what they think about the regulation and maybe what they think should change or could be improved um, has this process of reviewing already started and can you tell us something about the insight you got from companies from the industry Yes, so I can tell you already with this proposal we, we break every record in terms of social media because not only uh, uh, it's very interesting for the citizens uh, uh, packaging uh, but also because the whole industry is concerned. So we had an overwhelming, I think, 519 respondents to this, uh, to this uh, have a say, how we call it. Uh, and these 519 uh, they all made uh, made some constructive uh, proposals how the uh, the proposal can be further improved and indeed uh, it is now now uh, the commission proposal is out and now it's in the hands of the co-legislator so we as commission we are rather now the moderator to moderate the negotiations between the council and the European Parliament and this uh, information that we that we uh, that we receive from these 519 um, uh, stakeholder and uh, consumer organizations uh, input, this will let's say kind of uh, support us in in kind of moderating and trying to find good compromises in order to further improve the final text. Mm -hmm. How important is this exchange um, between? politics, the industry, um, companies, how important is that and why, what role do um, events like this Interpact, this fair play for you, do you think? Well, um, we have our better regulation rules, so that means that the, all stakeholders, the NGOs, uh, the uh, as European associations, national associations, directly big companies, they are involved from the beginning already of the phase when we drafted the impact assessment, when we drafted the legal proposal. So they are always involved because, to be honest, uh, we need also their, 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 their data. Their, the, the, um, we, we, we cannot, uh, let's say, uh, rely just on, on, our own, on our own research. We have a consultant which we, who also, we, or we had a consultant who also kind of uh, compiled and analyzed and uh, drafted these scientific reports or these reports about it. But nonetheless, it's, it's really important. But uh, what, we, what we really need is uh, to have a comprehensive view, not only to be kind of influenced by, let's say, today by the German uh, uh, machinery producers or uh, or by, the, by so so for us it's important to have the comprehensive view and to uh, to to make our our own picture because uh, all these stakeholders have this very specific uh, so we have to kind of keep the helicopter view uh, and to uh, to try to uh, to filter also a little bit uh, all these uh, uh, information over not overkill but all all this valuable information that we are uh, receiving i kind of like that image of the helicopter view you just painted do you have any last words that you would like to address to the industry the packaging and processing industry um, with regards to the regulation well uh, first of all we have huge support from the industry a priori from uh, from uh, for this uh, new uh, approach they are aware 
the member states are also aware of this shift, of this game-changing uh, uh, aspect of the new regulation so that we come out now with sustainability requirements on product level imposed, put on the economic operator. And this is a huge step forward. It will also change something in the national kind of Currently, the, the member states, they just have to think about these targets and so on. But in future, they will be the ones with their market surveillance authorities who have to police our new rules. And so that the companies, they comply with these sustainability requirements at product level. So uh, this is the important thing, the uh, shift for the member states. But for the industry, they are well aware and they, they are especially aware about the, the billions of euro of the economic benefits of the economic savings that, that they have when this regulation comes. So just my last point would therefore be that the industry is, 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 is aware and is, is not, ex let's say, um, exceeding uh, or be too demanding. They, we are very open to, uh, to constructive proposals to improve the, the draft regulations, the text, uh, but nonetheless the baseline should be that it is a very important piece of legislation and uh, if they overdo it, if they exaggerate, then there is the, 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 the problem that, or the, if there's a critical point that all collapses, then this is a little bit the problem. There were, I say, uh, we are very open to, uh, to, uh, to improvements and to further, uh, further fine-tune it, but, uh, but please, uh, the, the baseline should be get it through within one year, within this legislature le of, the, of the current European Parliament, uh, because otherwise we will, all these standstill that we imposed uh, for the national rules, will be over and then the mushrooming of national rules will explode again. It is a very ambitious regulation. Dr. Tung, thank you so much for coming to us and speaking with us, for taking the time. I hope you, have a, you can relax now for the rest of the day. Okay, thank you for the invitation. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much.